Throughout his time at McLaren, he made a lifelong friend in team boss Ron Dennis. Ron stood by him after a near-fatal crash at the 1995 Australian Grand Prix in Adelaide, when the Finn speared into a wall at high speed in practice. Mika suffered head injuries and nearly suffocated until quick surgery by trackside doctors cleared his airways. But once racing is in the blood, it is hard to get it out of the system. And with two Formula One World Championships already under his belt, the retired 34-year-old decided to test himself on four-wheeled racing of a different kind. The opportunity to race in his home rally just held too much appeal. Mika completed three days of practice on the frozen Kemajoki River in the north of Finland for his guest appearance as a Mitsubishi driver in the Arctic Rally. He admitted that he was enjoying the format immensely, but was also acutely aware of the difference between the driving styles and the pressures involved. He realized that having a world championship in one discipline did not mean a prospective championship in the other. But the talented driver always wanted to try rally driving, and when the opportunity came up at the right time, Mika was willing to give it a go. And if all went well, then he would consider taking part in further rallies. For a rookie, he had plenty of talent and pedigree on his side, with more Finns having won the World Rally Championship than anyone else since the series began in the late 1980s. And when it comes to pedigree, Mika tops the list. His first win in Formula One opened a floodgate, and he took eight victories in 1998 to beat Ferrari's Michael Schumacher to the championship by 14 points. He repeated the feat in 1999, beating Ferrari's Eddie Irvine to the title by two points after Michael Schumacher broke his leg at Silverstone. But the German was determined to get back into racing against Mika, rating him as his most competitive opponent on the circuit. The back-to-back -back World Championships powered the Finn into the select band of the world's greatest drivers. He joined six other luminaries who have achieved this feat, including Alberto Ascari, Juan Manuel Fangio, Jack Brabham, Elaine Prost, Ayrton Senna and Michael Schumacher. In his final season, the Finns' thoughts were clearly elsewhere and he finished fifth overall, despite wins at Indianapolis and Silverstone. Both victories came after he had made up his mind to quit. Juan Pablo Montoya made an impressive debut into Formula One, fully justifying the faith shown in him by Frank Williams. Even though he was frustrated from having to retire from 11 of the 17 races, two of which he could have won, the talent that impressed the Williams team in the beginning shone through. Juan Pablo Montoya. It was his raw talent that earned him the Laureus Sports Award and thrust him into the spotlight. He continued to impress in his debut season, earning his first win in Monza. Despite all the setbacks, Juan managed to accumulate an impressive 31 points, finishing sixth overall in his first season. Life off the track for Juan was just as successful as his racing career, with the Williams driver marrying Connie Fredel in a private ceremony in Colombia. The couple were accompanied by 300 family and friends when they wed in the temple of Santo Torribio di Cartagena. With Colombia suffering from constant violence, the area was surrounded by security agents and hovering police helicopters. Returning to his home country, the Formula One driver was inundated with well-wishers, including a call from Colombian President Alvaro Uribe. When Juan had the opportunity to trade places with NASCAR champion Jeff Gordon, he grabbed it wholeheartedly. Jeff drove the BMW Williams and Juan turned laps in the NASCAR Winston Cup car at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway's infield road course. This was the first time the two racing stars had driven their respective cars and it was an event they fully enjoyed. In the event named Trading Paint, Jeff, a four times NASCAR champion, and Juan, fresh off a Formula One victory at Monaco, burned up the circuit. Even though the racing was competitive, the day was a break from the grind of Formula One. After the ride, Juan joked that he thought there was not enough braking power in the stock car and that he needed a parachute to stop. It wasn't long before it was back to the serious business with Williams and with the dominance of Ferrari and Michael Schumacher, the Williams team was looking for a boost. Founded by Frank Williams in the late 1960s, a lack of financial support made success difficult to achieve. 
The team's first win came at Silverstone in 1979, followed by a Drivers' Championship for Alan Jones and a Constructors' title in 1980. In 1986, Frank Williams was involved in a road accident, which left him paralysed. Despite the trauma, the Williams drivers, Mansell and PK, dominated, with Elaine Prost claiming the championship. Frank realised a dream when he signed Ayrton Senna, but it turned into a nightmare when the brilliant Brazilian driver was killed at Imola. This left Damon Hill in the driver's seat, winning the title in 1996. It was in 1999 when Frank acknowledged the talent of Juan, organising a swap deal for the Colombian to take up the role in the Chip Ganassi team. There he flourished, taking the kart title in his rookie year. He claimed seven wins throughout the season, as well as seven poles, becoming the youngest champion in the history of the sport. Although Frank Williams wanted Juan back for the 2000 season, he remained with the kart series. He also went on to win the Indianapolis 500 on his very first attempt. Returning to Williams in 2001 to partner Ralph Schumacher, Juan saw his first Formula One victory. He secured several podium finishes and three pole positions in his debut season. A tussle with Michael Schumacher when the Colombian refused to back down to the German and a fierce confrontation with Jacques Villeneuve caused quite a stir on the track and his aggressive driving style has become a trademark for the fiery Williams driver.